Anytime you draw one thing, you are actually defining two things. The positive space occupied by the object and the negative space not occupied by the object. I have a good artist friend who really dislikes this terminology, especially the term negative space. Um, negative has a bad connotation to it and it, it, it seems like it is irrelevant or unimportant. And his argument is that the negative space is just as important to defining the subject as is the positive space. And he's right about that. My counter argument to his idea was that the terminology is, is more like the terms we use for a battery with a positive side and a negative side. And if you don't line it up right, you don't get any juice. So without the positive and the negative, you don't have a subject. Anyway, it goes. This is the terminology that is used in the art world, and so it's the terminology we will use in this class. When doing negative space drawing, instead of drawing the thing or things, you are to focus on and draw the open space, the air, the emptiness around the thing or things. If you do this correctly, you will end up with a pure outline of the negative space and in the process define the positive space. However, you should end up with no interior line details in the positive space. You're focused only on the negative space. This approach relates to figure ground reversal images. Research indicates that at any given moment, you see one or the other. Your mind can switch back and forth so quickly that it seems like you see both at the same time, but you don't. Your brain filters out the perceived negative space as irrelevant and ignores it. This easy example of faces and candlestick um, is an example why people think they can see both at the same time in that a face and profile is burned into our, our mind. It's a very solid construct, as is the candlestick. Um, so the brain is quick to reference both uh, in its library. And that means that the brain can bounce back and forth very quickly between the two. The fact that we can't see both at the same time might be more evident from one of the more difficult figure ground reversals. In this image, do you see a young woman or an old woman? The young woman is looking away. We see the tip of her nose just barely beyond her cheekbone. We see her chin and jawline in profile. We see her ear barely sticking out from underneath her hair. And we see her necklace. The old woman is looking down. You, you see a bony cheekbone sticking out just barely uh, from behind a big prominent nose. You see a tired looking eye and you see a, a mouth uh, that looks like she's toothless with a, a long chin. If you're like me, uh, you see both figures in this image, but it takes longer to move from one to the other. The key factor for me personally is moving from the cheek jawline of the young woman to the nose of the old woman. Um, that construct change takes longer to happen, but when it happens, I move from one figure to the other. So negative space drawing fights the construct by forcing you to look at and see things differently. It, you're, by focusing on the negative space, 
which your construct generally ignores. Uh, it doesn't allow that construct to interfere with accurate drawing of the positive space. If you get the negative space right, the positive space will be right. But you're not used to doing it that way. That's how it fights the construct.